what he's going to bring to the table. He also does some things better than Deshaun, so we're, we're excited about it. It's been great, you know, having him for a full spring and all 15 practices. Um, you know, last spring it was, you know, it was, it was all brand new to him, and it was learning a new language, new new terminology. And you know, he's coming, he's coming along. He's another guy that has a lot of position flexibility. Um, I think he could play three different positions in our secondary uh, because of his skill set, his athleticism. He can run, he can cover, he's ta he can tackle. Um, you know, he, he's still learning the playbook, and you know, I'm, I'm excited to see just what he's going to be able to contribute this fall. Learning the playbook too. I mean, with, with what Deontes is, and I know he's made some plays. Obviously, Keith Abney, who coach, admitted taking an interception away from because of the, the whistle in a uh, in group there. But we well, got it back in seven on seven. He did. Yeah, he did get it back in seven. Yeah, yeah it wasn't yeah, taken away there. Right. Um, but I mean, with Keith and Woods, you can give him my Deontes has done. I mean, just this group. I mean, I know you've talked to me about about flexibility, but when you're looking at it, I mean, you're putting guys. If you put them in, you know, from more nickel from safety, you know, moving them up. How how is this group accepting of that? And how much more, I guess, fun does it make it to call the defense for you? Um. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really how I install it. They all know it's part of the deal. Like when they come here, it's, you know, we we don't want, uh, you know, we really kind of run it, you know, a lot like, you know, an NFL roster might run it. I'm trying to get the best 11 guys on the field, and I'm trying to teach this conceptually. And we're looking for guys that have the football IQ to be able to learn more than one position. Because if if we recruit a guy for one position and he can't play that position and he can't play any other position, then what are you going to do with that player? So we're trying to do what's best for those players, and we're trying to do what's best for us as well in terms of uh, helping us be successful on the field when it matters the most. So, um, you know, putting those guys in positions where they can succeed, it's really we teach conceptually, and then we try to adapt our system to what our personnel can do. It seems that like you do have some versatility, though. Yeah, that's the beauty of it, and that's really a byproduct of you know, our, our recruiting philosophy and, and our evaluation process. Coach, I apologize if this has already been asked, but with the void of Ed Woods now entering the transfer portal, um, how much of a loss is that, and how do you kind of fill that void going forward? Well, I mean, that, that's, that was our goal. Like, when we, when we set out here uh, 14 months ago or 15 months ago when we got here is, is uh, you know, it is a team sport, and one guy, you know, one guy is not going to, be the determining factor whether we're successful or not and that's one of the things is we you know we we really have our, our recruiting philosophy here and our eva evaluation process um, is really starting to take hold right now in terms of our depth and and the position flexibility that we have guys um, you know on defense being able to do I mean you see defensive line wise we have guys that can play you know multiple positions in multiple situations at linebacker we have cover linebackers we have run stopping linebackers we have uh, we have guys that can play both positions, um, you know, the Michael or the Will, or can play that, you know, that big nickel position. And in the secondary, you know, we have several guys that are that are multifaceted and, and can play the strong three or the nickel in any given situation, or even come in and play dime. So, um, you know, losing one guy, you know. Uh, it's really that may have been fatal for us last year. I think it would have been, but I think at where we're at right now in the way that we're we're building this roster, it's just you know we just got to move on. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna, feel, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna the guys that want to be here. How do you feel the defense overall as a unit and a group grew the most this spring? I, I just think just the overall like we're we're able to do some things that we weren't really able to do due to our lack of depth, lack of knowledge, um, and like I said from jump, I said it from day one of spring. We have a core Four group of of guys that know what the standard is and, and know what we're doing on defense, and they know why we're doing it. And those guys being here have allowed us to take the next steps in installing this defense and, and, and being able to get more specific with how we call it and putting us in better positions based on what offenses are going to do. And we've worked a lot of that this spring. I mean, and we prepared this spring for a lot of the opponents that we're going to see this fall. So we weren't able to do that last last spring. And, um, a lot of what we did this spring was a prepar true preparation for what we're doing in the fall, whereas a year ago we were just trying to lay the foundation. Of the other guy I really like, I'm sorry, the other guy that I really like that I think is taking a step forward is CJ Fight. Yeah, you know, he's, he's really taking that, you know, the best thing about, the best thing about freshmen is they become sophomores.
and uh, and he's 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 really going into that role. I mean, he's, we really expect him to be a difference maker this second year. Who so are some guys? Too. I mean, he, he did make that catch in the challenge. Hey, more so him than, than Leaf. Okay, that's so <laughs> I actually tried to coach Leaf on that when he came. Coach, how do I catch punts? I was like, put your nose underneath the ball, get your elbows together, and he really tried to. He just <laughs> just didn't track the ball. You know, that dude had not played baseball before. So. We want to see Kenny out there getting. More. I love it. I have with his knee. I don't know that he moves around very well. I bet on him if, it, if his knee was okay. With uh, significant losses on each level of the defense with Deshaun, Travion, and then Rowe, um, who are some guys in each of those areas that you feel have kind of stepped up and started to take charge of that role early on in spring? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, at safety, you got, um, you know, Miles Rouser, Kamari Wilson, you know, Xavier Alford a, is a, a jack kind of all trades. and He can play free, he can play nickel, he can play strong. Um, you know, we, we really feel great about our depth at strong safety and being able to replace, um, you know, our strong safety position um, at corner. You know, Javen Robinson's really, really stepped up. He's been a very consistent performer. He's exactly what we thought where he was going to be. Terrence Welch has gotten a, a lot better, especially this last week. He's taken huge strides. Um, you know, you got young guys like Rodney Bimage, and you got a guy that's flexible like Keith Abney. You know what I mean? That 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 we, you know, could move over to corner as well. And he's had an outstanding spring, learning the nickel, playing corner. So, um, yeah, we're we're really excited. You know, Jacob Rich and Geica came in. Jeff Clark has come in on the defensive line. You know, we got guys like Blazing Monawong, Tristan Monday. You know, I know CJ's had a phenomenal spring. And he's done what we expected him to do, but we just feel better overall about our depth right now. And Again, the foundation has been laid, so it's allowed us to do some other things this spring that we weren't able to do last spring. What are some things um, that you saw from Javon at Washington State and from seeing him play there to now kind of early on in spring ball as far as his skill set development? Uh, you know, he was just a, you know, he was a guy that just had phenomenal, uh, phenomenal athletic ability, could really run, great cha elite change of direction. Um, and, you know, even though he's our fifth corner up there, even his freshman year, he made the wow plays at practice. And that was a great room up there, a corner, several guys that are uh, either getting a shot in the league or in the league right now. So, um, you know, Javen has as high a ceiling as, as any of those guys, if not higher. So I'm really excited about his development and what kind of year he's going to have this year. You mentioned earlier in the how pleased he was with the IQ of the linebacker, especially with the transfers that have sort of bolstered the depth there. That was that was then. Where, where are they now, right, in terms of those, like, several weeks ago? Mm -hmm. uh, they're just getting better and better. I mean, some of the things that they're doing, it's just kind of amazing to me because of all the things that their offense has given us and, and the looks and, and the ability to get lined up to what they're doing is just super impressive, and it starts with those guys right there. So those guys are all buying in, and it's just a testimony to some of those leaders in that room, um, you know, in, in terms of their work ethic and their preparation. Um, it, it's, it's really impacted those guys that came in. And you know, remember, okay, all three of those guys played a lot of football before they got here. So that's something that we've had even before he got here. Uh, towards the end of last season, the numbers in that room kind of made it so that maybe you couldn't practice the way you wanted to uh, to the level with the amount of certain intensity. Now that you know, it's a lot more solidified, there's, there's numbers, there's depth. Some, someone has to sit out, you know, another guy can step in. How has that helped uh, you know, the spring progression for the unit? Depth is everything, but competition drives performance. And, um, you know, when guys don't feel like studying their playbook or studying or asking questions in a meeting, when they feel, you know, the pressure of having to perform, um, you know, it's either going to make diamonds or it's going to it's going to make guys turn a, you know, turn and walk away and, and, and jump in the portal. So, uh, and these guys are just wired a certain way. They're all used to playing. So they understand the preparation of what it takes to be a division one football player. And with losing someone like Trey Brown, uh, that particular position, how have you seen, I'm going to talk to, to AJ about this a little bit, the dynamic of you guys mixing with, with some of the, the returners and finding sort of the leadership uh, in that game. So again, you know, Trey, Trey really did. He, he was such a great example for those guys like Tate and, and, and Caleb McCullough, Crew Jackson, um, KB on Thunderbird. The guys that have been there, he had a big influence on those guys and a big impact about just how you bring your your lunch pail to work every day and how you're going to approach every day in your preparation, whether it's meetings, whether it's a training table, whether it's a training room. Um, Trey just left a great legacy in that room, um, showing guys how to be unselfish, how to lead uh, from, from a, a humility standpoint and just putting the work in every day also coming to work every day just with a positive attitude and never having a bad day um, you know so those guys have laid that foundation in the room and 
whoever those guys were before. And we don't know, you know, in terms of, you know, we don't know who they were in their other programs. But, you know, that room just has a culture. And, uh, you know, it's setting the culture for our whole defense.